things are subject to inflation. Inflation can be by the outcomes of collective agreement negotiations. It can be produced by the fact that the cost of buying benefit packages increases uh, owing to factors that really have very little to do with public schools but are part of a broader marketplace dynamic. But all of these, again, we don't face, we being school districts, the school system does not face static costs that remain unchanging over time. These things do change. They evolve, they develop, and districts have to basically meet those cost obligations and cost increases if they want to continue to provide the services they do. That's the second element. The other the third element in the overall picture is what I call crisis management oriented cuts. These are cuts in spending allocations made to districts that don't have any kind of educational logic, rationale, criteria, justification. They're simply exercises to try and save money. As most of you know, provincial budget, provincial finance is in a significant period of deficit these days. As a product of that, uh, the provincial government has looked everywhere through the entire width and breadth and length of public sector spending to find areas to cut. As it turned out this past year, the annual facilities grant for the AFG used, that amount of money was cut this past last fall, or last spring. The cut had a significant impact on the budgets of districts. Many districts had already gone ahead and made commitments to spend money, started work, had entered into contracts with providers of services. But that money was cut because it was available. It was a discretionary area of expenditure uh, that the minister had authority to make or not make under the uh, provisions of the School Act. So that amount of money was cut. So these three elements together comprise the, the basic underlying ingredients of the structural funding shortfall. Now to this item, there's a fourth element that I'd like to refer to because I think this is a very real factor and phenomenon. Falling enrollment. Anyone who ventures uh, into close proximity to the public school system knows that we have a situation throughout this province of falling enrollment. It's been that way in BC since the earlier part of this decade, 2002, I believe. Since 2002, we've lost close to 42,000 students in our public schools. From a high of close to 600,000 down to currently insanity of 550,000. We're scheduled or slated or expected to lose another 2,700 in the coming year and 2,000 and some in the year beyond that. The loss of students, the hemorrhaging of students is starting to slow down. We'll likely bottom out within the next four or five years, after which time it may well increase. But funding enrollment it illustrates, I think, a significant problem with the way in which our school system operates. Now, I'm going to show you some facts and figures here. Uh, <coughs> first of all, just by way of background, rough, roughly three quarters of the districts in this province currently are still in a, experiencing a situation of falling enrollment. There are probably about another 10 that are kind of at a static level, not really growing, but not declining. And there are a few districts, Surrey perhaps being the best example, which have never had declining enrollment and continue to grow, albeit at a slightly or significantly uh, slowed rate compared to where they were, say, 10 years ago. But this is still really very much the norm for our public school. We still have close to three quarters of our schools losing students. But what happens when you lose students? It has such an impact on the way our schools operate because our funding allocation model, the funding allocation system used in public school education here is a per student model. For every student you have in school, you have allocation, um, at least in the current year, 2009-10, uh, $5,851. So if you lose a student through falling enrollment, the formula works in the other direction. You lose $5,851. There's additional monies that are provided to pay for transportation and special education and other areas of budget, but this is the per student allocation that's made. So if you lose a student, you lose $5,851 in revenue. 
Now, secretary treasurers in this province have estimated if we lose a student on average, and it's not just one student, but if you lose, if you average it over the school population that's been lost, we figure we can operate our system more efficiently to the tune of roughly $2,828 per student. In other words, you can realize certain efficiencies. If you lose 30 students, maybe you can get close a classroom or eliminate a teaching position and cut supplies. Uh, you still have to heat the building, you still have to provide a certain level of school infrastructure and administration and clerical support and so on and so forth. But you can very clearly see the problem here. In a situation of declining enrollment, you lose $5,800. You may be able to realize $2,800 of efficiency in the way you operate. But that still leaves you with over a $3,000 per student crater in your budget every time that happens. And remember, we have been in a situation of declining enrollment in BC since 2002. So this problem is cumulative year after year. There are different elements in the funding allocation model that cushion it and provide a bit of <coughs> temporary relief in funding. But the overall impact of losing students is a loss of money that far exceeds or surpasses the ongoing ability of districts to realize greater efficiencies in the way they operate. You lose a student, the net cut is a $3,000 figure. That figure's got to come out of your budget somewhere else. It's got to be found somewhere else in your budget. So, and that is a situation which tends to lend greater depth and uh, seriousness to the overall structural funding shortfall that I'm talking about. As I indicated, it's a cumulative loss. To the extent that you lose students year after year, you find that you lose money and you lose more money next year so that the overall amount of pressure this creates in a district's budget becomes very enormous over time depending on how fast and how far you drop in terms of your overall student enrollments. 